Good morning, Nielsen, FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Jeff Mako, co-owner of Mako Floors in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Hattinger's down in Fort Myers. Jeff, how you doing? Good morning, Kemp. Doing great. Thank you. I want to catch up. It's been two months since we talked, and this, that was right as things were coming down. So now things you know, look like they might be opening back up a little bit. Let's talk about that in a minute. First, though, I want to talk about some sad news, the fact that the founder of what was at the time called Mako and Sons, which you, yeah. your father, Jim, has passed away earlier this month, right? He did. He passed away the 4th. Yeah, it was very sad to lose a, a father, of course, is tough, and in this case, he was not just the father, but he was also my boss. I will tell you, though, Kemp, I'm a fortunate man. I, I got a dad, as most of us did during my childhood, and then I got to work with him every day for the rest of my life. So no complaints. Well, did he ever have that duck in his hand when he was calling you in the office? <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that I have the record, by the way, in the company of uh, being fired the most times. Okay. Yes, I think I got the duck. Matter of fact, that duck, by the way, is now in my office. So uh, that's my doorstop now. Okay. You guys are going to have to read the obit to know what we're talking about. <laughs> but uh, just one more thing. He served this country. In he the did. Navy, and you know, on yep. a, on a boat, a fantastic guy. Went to business school, started in the hardware business, then got in the flooring business. Put his sons in the business. At one point, had everybody under twenty five working for him. That had to be yeah. interesting. Yeah. And, and then passed away at eighty nine. What a great guy! All quite right. an innovator in our industry. He goes back to the earlier days. So quite an innovator. Uh, uh, and did you learn from him about how to treat vendors? <laughs> Well, let's just say I got some input there. Yeah, he was the hard-nosed guy. The vendors were kind of afraid of him. Now, the ones that got to know him quite well, they could kind of see through all of that. But old school, I think, describes him very well. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk. Everybody knows Mako's successful business. On top of your game, I'd say, three sectors. You serve the builder market, the commercial market, and the retail market. I really want to focus Correct. on the retail market because that's the one that's been most impacted. Just top line real quick, as you just look at how much it's been impacted, let's say, in April, how far down did you go? I think as an, on an average, we were down about 20%. I have to tell you that we were pleased with that. You know, We thought it would be worse than 20 but I think you, you hit it right in the head. The retail business is what we've seen some slowdown in. Our commercial business and our, our new construction business has not slowed at all. But consumers are still somewhat nervous or skeptical to even come out of their home. And so I think until we see that change, you know, we still might struggle a little. Now, that said, though, Kemp, our May numbers right now for the first half of May, we are right on line with last year. I mean, we're not down at all. Matter of fact, in Florida, we're up a little bit. So, you know, I'm hoping that we're seeing the other side of this. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic news. That's another reason I want to talk to you. So I know you've tried some new things. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. if I, as I look at your site today, you've got Madeline Mako, and she's going to offer, just click here and tell me what you're up against, and I'll offer you some interior design consulting. So tell me how all that's gone. Yeah, well, what we did was we set up a virtual interior design service. Yeah. So all the folks have to do is either call, click, uh, they, can, they can contact us any way they want. Yeah. And then one of our designers reaches back out to them. We've got iPads in each store. They can either talk to the consumer over the phone. And I can tell you what we found with this is once the conversation starts, when it is not just a customer or a dealer, when it's Sue talking to Betty or Bob yeah. talking to Joe, the fear tends to subside. Yeah. So our goal on this was to get that conversation started. So the designer would reach back out to the homeowner, and then they would just start chatting about the room. Tell me about the colors. What yeah. is your furniture? Yeah. The homeowner would send pictures. Several of our vendors have the ability. They could send us a picture of their room, and we can actually impose the floor that they're looking at right in their photos. So we've started that. It's working. Mm -hmm. um, consumers are a little bit more receptive then to allow us to come out to the house to measure. They are allowing us to do the installs. A lot of customers will still come into the store. We'll send samples to them if that's what they prefer, either a direct mail or bring them to their home. And if they can't find what they like, then uh, they're coming in. So it's so far so good. It's, it's definitely not the same as the retail experience, but it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. All right, so you've stayed open this whole time, despite the fact yes. you have a governor up there that's been kind of pushy and wanting things to close, but not to get into Wisconsin politics. So. Well, the state of Wisconsin specifically listed right from day one as construction as an essential business. Mm -hmm. 
so we looked at that and said, well, okay, that's us. Now, you, one could argue whether that is or is not, or it's commercial or residential, but we took the understanding that that's us, and we did not close a single day, not one day. We do a lot of work in the state of Michigan. We have a store that's directly on the border of Wisconsin and Michigan, and their uh, governor is a little bit different, and they shut down everything. So we couldn't yeah. do work in the state of Michigan, right. but Wisconsin and Florida, we, we continued on. Uh, we never closed a single day. So can you enlighten my listeners in any more some things that they should be trying to do now to build store traffic? or to get the consumer to feel comfortable that you're the place to buy? Well, absolutely. The, the first thing I would tell everybody is we set up a protocol early on, mm-hmm. and we still do it to this day. We have a conference call with all managers every Wednesday where we discuss all facets of this unique situation we're in. But we have a protocol that has not changed. We require every employee when they come in the morning, the first thing they do before they punch in is they have to report to the bathroom, wash their hands, and then report to HR and get their temps checked. And that's recorded every single day. We do the same thing of all sales staff. We disinfect the stores, obviously, several times a day. We provide gloves. We provide masks if people want them. By the way, we don't require people to come in and wear them. Some of our staff does. Some of our staff does not. Some of our customers do. Some don't. I'm fine with it either way, whatever they prefer. We call all consumers in advance and ask them the same questions. Is anybody in your house sick? Have you treated anybody that's sick? You know, once everybody feels comfortable with the protocol, our consumers have have told us they feel much more confident or comfortable with either having them come in the store or having us come in their homes. So we continue on with that protocol, and we will keep going with it. The other thing I can tell you is we haven't changed, uh, other than maybe we took off a week of marketing yeah. in April. Yeah. Other than that, we have uh, we've maintained our normal marketing program. Yeah. Now, I'm sure most of the listeners will know the radio stations and TV stations have a ton of, of available airspace. Yeah. Right. Uh, so our cost for our advertising is 50 cents on the dollar as to what it was previous. Okay. So we cut our advertising budget by a half but didn't run one single less ad. So we're running the same ads in, in the same time frame. I can tell you that we've not, what we've not done is we've never run a single ad that says, woe is me, this times are bad, yeah. you know, we're going to end this together. I understand all that and I appreciate it. We've never run a single ad. It's always been positive and upbeat. All right, so last thing before we run out of time, lasting effects. What do you think? I mean, you know, a lot of people want a crystal ball this thing about how much, everybody's going mm-hmm. DIY. Why everybody's going e-commerce? Mm-hmm. People are going to be concerned about country of origin. Carpet's dead. Now, tell me some of that. What do you think? <laughs> First off, my crystal ball isn't any better than anybody else. <laughs> I'll give you my two cents. Uh, I think we might see some pushback on country of origin. Yeah. We've already discussed that. That could happen. We just don't know at this point. I think the longer this goes, I'm already seeing consumers are getting much more used to going out and comfortable with going out. And eventually, I think most people will come around. And staying at home is, pr- is not as much fun as it is going outside. So I think at some point we may see retail return. But uh, folks did get a taste uh, of, of, of virtual shopping and online shopping, and I think that that uh, long term could have some effects to us. We're not going to change you know, our philosophies. We think our business is still touchy-feely. We think folks want to touch it and feel it, and, and um, you know, we're going to continue to run with that design and retail stores. I think it may take months and months and months, but I think we may get back to what we had uh, prior to this as somewhat of a, a normal routine. Um, I will say that young people are different, and their buying habits are different than the rest of us old people, and they may change to virtual buying regardless of COVID just you know, yeah. because that's how they like to do things. So we have to be conscious of that. But uh, all in all, I think our second quarter is going to stink but our third and fourth is going to be pretty decent. I can't imagine buying flooring, six, $7,000 investment without touching and feeling it. Can't I tell. agree. You can't tell the quality unless you touch and feel it. But anyway, one, no, one, one last 100%. thing. Your wife flies for Delta. How's she doing? She was furloughed for a year. Ah, okay. So they came back and said, does anybody want to take a year off? And she said, oh, I will. So she volunteered. Should say. Okay. I'm hoping that the demand comes back, that the airlines continue to fly. Yeah. So we'll see. But no, she's retired. I see. <laughs> okay, Jeff, great to talk to you again. Been talking to Jeff Mako, co owner of Mako Floors, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.